Hi pals, it's Mick, and today I wanted to share with you my second Inktober drawing using the prompt Lavender Tea and Deer. So I'm using a new kind of watercolour paper today, it's on a block rather than a pad, and it is cold pressed rather than hot pressed. Got the Kuritake Gansai Tambai watercolours, a kneadable eraser, I have a Pit Artist Pen by Faber-Castell, it's an F size, not sure what that means, then I've just got a collection of watercolour brushes, a white Posca pen and a white Signo Uniball gel pen. So I'm starting off by lightly erasing the sketch so that the colour erase pencil below doesn't interfere with the watercolour too much, and so that you can't see it when I've finished lining it, basically. So in the past you might remember that I've said that I don't really like to use black fine liner because it tends to come off really harsh, but I've been using it for Inktober and I have really enjoyed the way that it turned out for the two pieces that I've done. So I've decided to line this piece with the Pit Artist pen and I will say that I did notice a difference using this fine liner on cold press watercolour paper as opposed to on hot press watercolour paper and the reason for that is because cold press watercolour paper is more textured than hot press watercolour paper and so obviously that impacts the fine liner tip because it's not really made for drawing on rough paper but there you have it <laughs> So now I'm moving on to the painting section of this video, I guess. I don't know why I like signpost things, I feel like it's a bad habit that I got from high school. Anyway, I decided to paint in this deer skull in a teacup, and I think that it will probably be clear that this is kind of a weird idea. Initially when I decided I was going to use this deer prompt, which by the way is from the Witch Familiars prompt that I'm a Wonder has put up on her Instagram, I'll pop it up here on the screen and I'll link it in the description down below. Anyway, I used her prompt, Dia, and I also took lavender tea from the prompt list that I used for last week's video. Uh, I did hibiscus tea last week and using lavender tea this week, and I believe that the creator of that list was Cassie's art book on Instagram, but there's a bunch of other hosts, so I'm not sure how that exactly works. So I decided to go with the witch familiar prompt, Dia, and the teetober witches prompt, lavender tea. and. When I first looked at those prompts, I thought that I would have like two skeleton hands holding up a teacup and in the teacup would be the silhouette of one of the familiars. I hadn't decided on the familiar yet because if you follow my Instagram, you will remember that I put up a poll and I asked some of you guys to help me to decide and there was a couple of different polls and eventually deer won and it was a close one. It was between deer and owl and uh, yeah, it, it uh, came down to the wire and I had to wait a long time before somebody put in that deciding vote. Anyways, I was just going to have a silhouette, but as I thought about it more, I decided that I wanted to lean into the spooky side of things and I, I wanted to do a skull. I've drawn a deer skull before and I really like the look of them and I enjoy drawing them, so that's what I wanted to do. And then rather than just sticking a deer skull in a teacup as though it was floating around in there, I kind of... I don't know how I made the connection, but my brain was like, deer skull tea bag, right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I can't. I don't have an explanation. But do you know those tea bags that have like the tea bag holders or they're like tea filters or something and they have those designs where they kind of hang over the edge of the teacup? For example, it could look like a, a cat. I, I recall specifically seeing a cat looking like he's kind of in a spa or sauna or something. And so that was sort of the line of thought that I went down on this one and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense because obviously a deer skull has a bunch of holes in it. Also it's only like the top half of the skull so I don't really see how it would work. I feel like maybe it could it could be done though. Like if you really wanted to make a tea strainer or a, or a tea filter or whatever they're called out of like a, a molded deer skull, I feel like you could do it. 
it's like it just wouldn't be easy and, and maybe not practical but I did think that it was cool that the horns could potentially hold it like hanging over the edge of the teacup and for that reason I'm kind of happy that deer won the poll because if I had owl I don't know how I would have made that work like would I have made the wings hooking over the edge or like its little its little feet claws but then it would be upside down and like owls don't hang outside down and bats hang upside down and that just wouldn't have made sense so anyway <laughs> All that rambling aside, I'm really glad that Dio won the poll because I really like this concept. However, I did struggle with it a little bit because it was, I guess, it's kind of, while weird, a fairly simple concept. And so I was going to stop at just having a teacup with a deer skull being held by a skeleton hand. But by the time I got there, I realized this is kind of boring. <laughs> And I decided I would add a background color that you can see me putting in here, but it took me a long time to decide on this color and in the end I'm not super happy with it. I'm not a huge fan of pink and I used pink because I figured it was a complementary color to purple, but in hindsight I do wish that I had chosen a lighter, more bluish purple in order to pull on the idea that it is lavender tea because like, this is the colour of lavender tea, I've, at least the colour of lavender tea that I found on Google Images, but it looks a lot like the hibiscus tea that I did last week. It looks more red-toned than purple, and I just thought that's not exactly what I was going for, and I think that if there was, like, a lighter lavender, like, an actual lavender colour as the background, maybe that would sort of push the idea that this was lavender tea a little bit more, but... I guess it is what it is and yeah this is what we ended up with uh, a light pink background and I don't like I don't hate it I don't think it looks terrible but um I definitely think it could have been better I decided to go through with my Signo Uniball gel pen in white in order to go through and do some highlights, but it wasn't quite opaque enough and I didn't think that it was showing up as well as I would have liked. So I also went in with my white Posca pen and just did a couple of highlights and then for some reason I just added all these like little dot white particles and yeah, that was essentially the picture done. But it still looked too plain for me, I was still like bored by it, so I decided to go around the uh, the edges of the border I guess and push a little bit further the lavender theme and because I hadn't done that with colour I was like screw it I'm just gonna do actual lavender I'm just gonna paint in some lavender and I'll use the same colour that I use for the tea and then it will be obvious right and so I did that and I realised no it doesn't look like lavender because it's not the colour of lavender <laughs> so I wasted a little bit of time on this but I don't mind too much because it like made a nice base colour for it. And then finally I have gone in with this much bluer purple. I believe it's called Cobalt Purple or something from the Kuratake Sanbai. Kuratake Tanbai Gansai watercolours. Still can't freaking pronounce that. Also added a little bit of blue to it to make it even more of a lavenderish colour and then went around adding it to the lavenders and then kind of just put lavender particles all over the place because, I don't know, mag magical little particles? I, I don't know, there has to be some sort of magic involved if there's a skeleton hand holding a teacup with, a, with the deer skull in it, so yeah. And there you have it. But please don't click off the video yet because I just wanted to show you, if you're not familiar with a watercolour block, how they work. So you'll see here, basically it's a block of watercolour paper and it's all glued together. It tells you that you can remove the sheets by 
poking in like a little tool that looks like a guitar pick. Now it didn't come with it, but my Regina's watercolor sample set of B paper came with the tool, so I decided to use that. And as you can see, you're meant to run it around the edges here, just like I did, but I also pulled off the last remaining edge, and I don't think that's a good idea, and I don't recommend you do it, because I think that's why mine turned out a little bit warped, as you can see here. But I liked it anyway, and I think it's a lot better than the results that I got from a pad of watercolour paper, as you saw last week. So there you have it, my second Inktober drawing for the prompt, Deer and Lavender Tea. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it, share if you think it's worth sharing, and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you'd like to be notified when I upload. Thanks so much for watching. Bye pals!